In problem number 42 of section 4.1, uh, we look at the law of conservation of energy and we write it as a differential equation. Now, recall that the law of conservation of energy says that the sum of the potential energy and the kinetic energy or of a moving object, also known as the total energy, is constant. Now, um, remember that the potential energy is equal to mgh, where m is the mass of the object, uh, g is the gravitational constant, and h is the height of the object. And the kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, where again, m is the mass of the object, and v is the velocity of the object. Now, part a asks us to express this as a first order differential equation. Uh, so, to express the um, total energy. So energy is equal to the sum of the potential energy and the kinetic energy, which is, well, mgh plus one half mv squared. But if we consider only velocity in the vertical direction, and if h is only modeling the vertical position of the function, then, uh, or assuming, of course, h and v are functions of t here, then v is simply the derivative of h. So this reduces to mgh uh, plus one half m dh dt squared. Right. Now, part b. Uh, as to show that uh, the second derivative of the height function with respect to t is equal to negative g. In other words, that uh, the acceleration is constant and it's equal to the gravitational constant, uh, which, right, should make sense. But, uh, so we're going to do this by differentiating, differentiating both sides um, of the equation that we found in part a. Now, remember that the left-hand side here the energy is assumed to be constant. That's what the law of conservation of energy says. So we have zero on the left-hand side. Now this is going to equal uh, m and g are just constants. Have dh dt plus one half m times. Now we use the chain rule, so we multiply by two dh dt and multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is the second derivative of h with respect to t. Now, we're assuming also in this problem that uh, the velocity is not equal to zero. Now, if the velocity is not equal to zero, then velocity is well, the same thing as the dh dt. Then we can divide both sides by dh dt, and also divide both sides by the mass. And here, twos cancel out. And all of this leaves us with zero is equal to g plus the second derivative of h with respect to t, which implies that second derivative of h with respect to t is, in fact, equal to minus g. So the acceleration is indeed constant. Now, in part C, we look at the height function that we've become familiar with. Um, in fact, what I mean by, the, by the height function is the function that models uh, object fall, uh, a falling object. So we have h of t equals minus 1 half g, again, the gravitational constant, times t squared, plus v naught t plus h naught, where v naught is the object's initial velocity, and h naught is the object's initial height. And we ask, does it satisfy the differential equation from part b? Asking, does it satisfy this here? Well, h prime of t, that was going to equal minus g t plus v naught. And differentiating one more time, we see that h double prime of t, the second derivative, is minus g. So as we would expect, things work out. And we see that the height function 
does satisfy the equation, the differential equation that we derived in Part B. Part D, um, yeah, or excuse me, Part should be Part D. Um, asks us what the total energy is of a falling object. So we're going to use the equation that we have in Part C and um, try to express the total energy in terms of mg, v0, and h0. So we know that the total energy E is equal to uh, potential energy plus kinetic energy, which is mg h, which is a function of t, plus 1 half mv squared, or 1 half dh dt squared. Now, h of t um, is given by the formula in part c. This is equal to mg, I have minus 1 half g t squared uh, plus v naught t plus h naught plus one half m. Now we have dh dt squared, and dh is going to be minus g t uh, plus v naught and quantity squared. Uh, we can simplify this a little bit, and we get uh, negative mg squared over 2t squared plus mg v naught t plus mg h naught. And here, if we expand the um, expand this uh, quadratic here, we get g squared t squared minus two g t or g v naught t plus v naught squared. So adding that down over here, we get plus m g squared over 2 t squared. And the second term will be, the 2's will cancel out. So we end up with mg, minus mg v naught. And finally, we have, in the last term, we have 1 half m plus, or 1 half m times v naught squared. So now I have m v naught squared. Now we see that we have uh, these two terms here cancel each other out, as well as these terms. And that leaves us with mg h naught plus 1 half m v naught, which is well, potential energy plus the kinetic energy. We see that this does indeed make sense.